on today. And right now we loose the chains off of the intercessors on today. Off of the mouths of the true prayers and the tongues of the intercessors. That our words will begin to flow sharp as an arrow, as a two-edged sword. On today, Lord God, we loose the shackles off of the intercessors. We loose the chains off of the prayers. We loose the chains and the weight off of your people on today. And today we say, we pray on today as warriors, as true intercessors that will pray and that will break chains and that will break us. That on today, God, you increase our prayer. You increase our anointing. You increase, God, our consecration on today. Today, right now, we take authority over every spirit to shut down the spirit of intercession. We come against the enemy that set forth the plan to shut down his people. And we declare that liberty and justice and freedom will reign. Somebody open up your mouth. You want to release a sound in the house. Let the intercessors arise. Let the intercessors arise. And they will cry loud and spare out. They will pray without ceasing. Fervent prayers. Fervent prayers. Prayers of fire. Clothes of fire. Rest upon your people. As the day of Pentecost, as they were gathered in one room, we pray today that a mighty rushing wind sweep through this atmosphere. Sweep through the house. Sweep through our hearts, God. We thank you on today. And we pray, God, that you stand in the midst of us. Visit us, oh God. We welcome you on today. We welcome you on today. We say, have your way, God. You are the guest of honor. We give you the invitation to do what you will. And we give you praise and glory in Jesus' name. Come on, all nations. Somebody give him a shout this morning. Come on, somebody bless him this morning. Come on, let me hear you. Somebody bless him this morning. I need you to turn to your neighbor and tell your neighbor, I will remain confident. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Come on, somebody turn to another neighbor and say, I will remain confident. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. My children won't get all my promises. I'm going to live to see it. I'm going to get it. I'm going to get the house. I'm going to get the car, but I'm going to have courage. Somebody say, I'm going to have courage. I'm going to have courage. I'm going to have courage. I'm going to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Y'all ready to worship this morning? Come on, holler back at me. Are you ready to worship this morning? Come on, let's go. Come on, put those hands together. Put a smile on your face. Hey. It's a real simple song. One of my favorite songs. Is it alright if I teach you the song this morning? Come on, talk back to me. Is it alright if I teach you the song this morning? Some people say. Hey. hey, here we go. Oh, well, leave. 
Hold on, let me remind you of something. We can just get through the song, but that wouldn't do us justice today. Is there anybody in here who can see heaven around you? Is something when there's a, a mighty collision, when heaven begins to invade earth, let me tell you what happens when heaven begins to invade earth. Peace starts to jump in there. You find yourself depressed, and after a while, peace comes to come in there. And you find yourself shifting. You find yourself in a deep place, and love starts to creep in there. And then you need some money, and provider starts to show up. And then you need some breakthrough, and the breaker starts to show up. Heaven is all around. Somebody tell your neighbor, heaven, heaven, heaven. I prophesy heaven. Heaven is. Heaven is all around. I heard this week. Whatever the spirit is, that's where.
Wilson, the land of the living. Anybody ever waited on it? Anybody ever waited on it? After that verse is said, it's, wait on the Lord and be of good courage. I wish I had a Bible reader here. Wait on the Lord and be of good courage. And he shall strengthen your heart. Tell your neighbor, wait, 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 wait. Wait, 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 wait. You're rushing. Wait, 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 wait. Have courage. We'll see the goodness in the land of the living. Let me prophesy to you. You will see the goodness in the land of the living. I come against premature death. You will see the goodness. Yes, you will. Yes, you will. Yes, you will. Let me encourage your heart. You're going to see the goodness in the land of the living. My grandmama didn't see it. My great grandmama didn't see it. But I will see it. My ancestors didn't see it. But I'm going to see it. Lift up your hands one more time. Because heaven is all around us. Heaven is all around us. I live, I'll see the goodness in the land of the living. And as long as I live, his praises will forever be in my mouth. So let praises rise in this place. Pour out your adoration toward the Father. Use your words. Pour out your love to the Father. Pour out adoration to the Father. God, we love you. Your praises will forever be in our mouths. Your praises will forever be in our lips, Father. We bless your name, Jesus. We give you all the glory and the honor. Let praises rise in this place. 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 Out of your heart. Let praises rise in this place. Let it rise in this place. Let it rise. Let it rise. Let it rise. Let it rise. Let it rise in this place. Bless the name Jesus. All we want is for you to be glorified. Forever, Lord, our glory belongs to you, God. Let praises rise from the inside, from the inside.
faithful and to turn that worship into thanksgiving. Come on, turn your worship into thanksgiving. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Come on, can you praise him greatly? Come on, come on, extol him. Come on. Lift him high. Come on. Make noise unto the Lord and show him noise unto the Lord in this room. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good morning, everybody. You can have your seat. Welcome to the well on Nations Worship Assembly. We want to take this opportunity and acknowledge all of our first-time visitors. If you are here today, this is your first time at the well. We ask that you would stand to your feet and let us acknowledge you today. All first-timers, if it's you, amen. Amen. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, wow. twenty-four. Come on, nations, we know what to do. Let's go to all twenty-four of our first time visitors. Amen. We have gentlemen coming down the house to give you guys contact cards if you would fill those out. Drop them in the offering basket and we want to keep you up to date with what is happening at the well. Amen, church. We're going to grab our cell phones this morning. It is the time of our service for our service selfie. And what we do is we take pictures with the person around us, with the people around us, and we post it to social media. Today is the start of a brand new series, one that many of the intercessors are ecstatic about, called Let Us Pray. We want to use that today as our hashtag as we post today. Fellowship Hall. The game starts at 6.30. 
pricing is at $5 per adult and $3 per child. Everybody, what's going on? It's Pastor Jamal and Natasha. And we're so excited and we're coming to you with our Transform Gathering that comes up February 17th. And you know what we're talking about. Love. Or lust, how to date in holiness. Yeah, I said holiness. Come on, somebody. And guess what? We're not going to be alone in this round. We are going to be joined by our good friends and transformed leaders. Brian and Quincy Walker, along with Robert and Brittany Brush. And no, it's not going to be a panel. We are going to be preaching, passing the microphone, each of us sharing our journey, our the good, bad, and ugly of our journey to marriage. So you don't want to miss this transformation. And we're going to be featuring our brand new Transform Worship Band. We are so excited to have the young adults at the end stage and we have to worship God. So you want to join us February 17th, 7 30 p.m. Don't miss it. Hey, 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 Please remember that today's message will be available for purchase for $5 at the Well Bookstore located in the lobby. Thank you for listening to our weekly announcements. If you missed anything, you can visit our website at allnationswa.com forward slash announcements. Thank you for joining us at the Well and enjoy the service. Hallelujah. Turn to the person next to you, tell them neighbor, neighbor. great men and women, only born for the time that they are needed the most. And the only reason you're still here is because God is not finished. If this were everything life had to offer, then you'd have a reason to quit. But because he's not finished, you've got to press harder and see what tomorrow holds. Do me a favor when you give the Lord the best praise for February the first Sunday. Come on. Let's just thank God for life. Somebody says, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all of my fears are gone. And I know that life is worth the living. Come on, just because he lives. If you know the Lord holds your future, give him the best praise you've got. And he lives. Hallelujah. He lives. Glory to God. Slap somebody with a good soul in on and say, he lives. Good morning and God bless each of you. I'm going to have to switch it up. So ends. Do they? Bad, bad what did that up? Do we need to wear laces anymore? I think we start getting, we start figuring them out. So they switched. Pastor Linda, we're going to have a whole weave academic. And for a while I only thought it was the 27 piece. But they just switched it up on us. I mean, that's Neither is there any other name under heaven whereby men can be saved. Jesus is the sweetest name I know. I am excited. I'm blessed. I'm humbled uh, to be here under the name of Jesus Christ. And I'm thankful for God, to God, for the first Sunday in February. It has been a very aggressive year, and I don't think it's going to get any different. But most importantly, I'm excited to be doing life with you. Uh, I'm just grateful to be alive. Amen. Amen. To the person next to you, you got the best seats in the house. Yes. We're going to go ahead and we're going to uh, celebrate the Lord's Supper. And we're going to do that right now. Um, traditionally, we like to do it on random Sundays, but I guess we're going to be in compliance today. And we're going to do it the Sunday everybody does it. And we're going to celebrate the Lord's Supper. And our evangelism team is serving us today. If you are in need of a communion cup, please indicate so by lifting your hands uh, high. One of these precious people will come and serve you. Hallelujah. 
Blood can wash away my sins. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me hold up? It's nothing but the blood of Jesus. Singing on. I am very much a blood baby. 
baby in the blood boy. I believe in the blood of Jesus. And I believe that without the shedding of blood, there is no remission from sin. Hallelujah. I think we need to celebrate the blood more often. When you believe in the blood of Jesus, it doesn't matter what's active in your blood anymore. Come on, Come on. Switch is that stuff on out. Come on. It gives you a blood transfusion. Glory to God's high hand. Hallelujah. Don't mess with me. Glory to God. Songwriter is saying, when the blood of bulls and heifers and goats fell, God sent his only begotten son in the likeness of flesh. And in flesh he condemned sin in the flesh. How do we thank God for the blood? The Bible says the life is in the blood. Glory to God. And when he shed his blood, he gave you a right to have a brand new life. I thank God for the blood of Jesus. They are paid in full video. Alright, we are uh, we are in the largest capital campaign we have ever seen as a church. And um, those of you that were here for Vision Sunday last week. Heard all the detail of all the things we've got going on, a lot of which came in the works this week, and um, we're in the largest capital campaign we've ever been in, and we do one every year, and when we do it, we purchase property. Um, we have a major value system for the acquisition of land. We believe that a great portion of the scriptures are about God's promises over possession. So this year, we have a million dollar goal. And, um, amen. Amen. That's going to be Sunday, March the 26th. Yes. Sunday, March the 26th. It's going to be paid in full day. And, um, right now in paid in full, we have 189 commitments and 811 empty spaces on our giving wall. So if you have not committed, if you have not... Uh, invested. I want you to join us and be a part of this. And here is why. Say the word barrier. Can you say that? Barrier. Say barrier. barrier. When I asked last week, how many of you had ever given a thousand dollars in one offering? It was a lot of people that had not uh, raised their hand. And it, it's not an issue of manipulation or condemnation, but you won't know what you have the ability to get if you don't test what you have the ability to give. And when I first sold a thousand dollars anyway, uh, it was a long time ago, but it was one of the hardest things that I had to do, and not because I didn't have it or didn't have the ability to do it. It was working past the mental and the soulish war of giving that much money at one time. It was a barrier. Um, but when you can break giving barriers, you can break getting barriers, yeah. the easier it is for you to give it, Come on. the easier it will be for you to get it. The most powerful lesson I learned from deliberately breaking giving barriers was that the easier it is to give it, the easier and the quicker it is to get it. So I am challenging our church every week to be prayerful about this, be encouraged about our capital campaign. We are about to build God a house. And um, we need to do this right now for Chicago. We need to do it for America. Uh, but we need to do it also for Fox and BET. Come on. Uh, I'd even like to do it for President Trump. Somebody say, long live the church. Long live the church. Let them know that the church is just fine. So I want you to commit it in faith. Um, even if you got to commit it in fear, just commit it and ask God to help you to do it. You've got from now to March 26th, but I'm challenging you to break your giving barriers. I want you to think about on your own time, what's the largest amount you have ever sold in an offering? And if that amount 
is beneath what you expect to get, then you see the interruption. There is a barrier in your expectation and your investment. Many people expect beyond an investment, but you need to break the barrier. And so I do this and I use this occasion every year for myself to break yet another barrier. Uh, my wife and I were talking, if the whole objective of it is sacrifice, then it is unfair for me to only give $1,000 because honestly, that's not a sacrifice to me. So I have to give at the level of my sacrifice. For our household, what that means is if all I need is another payday uh, to replace what I sold, then I didn't sow a sacrifice. On, I donated something. So sacrifice is I'm putting God in a position to have to answer the commitment in this. So this is not something I'm pre-arranging. Uh, and I've got kids, glory to God's high name. And I make sure all of them so this morning. My son asked me in the car, Daddy, is this going to affect my ability to buy my house? And, and I said, son, well, when do you want to buy your house? He said, well, I'm going to live with you until I'm married. I said, well, you've got a lot of time to regain your offering back. You know, I praise God that he's thinking about business, but um, the principle is, is our entire house understands the power of sacrifice. So I just want you to allow the Lord to deal with you about those barriers because it may be interfering with something God wants to put in your direction. How many of you would believe God's trying to get some resource to you? Yeah. How would you act if you believe that God was trying to find a door to get stuff in your way? Yeah. Well, break the barrier and evaluate on your own life. What's the largest thing I've ever give, given? And challenge yourself in that. Who receives that? Now, if you like me, I love barrier breaking. I love doing stuff that people shouldn't do. I break all the barriers, and so money is no different with me, and I'm excited about that. Amen? So we're getting excited about paying it full. Again, after service, I want you to join us. Put your name on those walls. If you need a commitment card, there will be somebody at the paid and full table to help you there, but I want you to be a part of that. And in the same spirit, we're going to honor the Lord today with our tithes and our offerings. You Catholic spirit, I find you in Jesus' name. I said we're going to honor the Lord today with our tithes and our offerings. Are there any generals of generosity in this house? These gentlemen are coming down the aisles with envelopes. We're going to have barrier breaking money this year. And these gentlemen are coming down the aisles. If you are sowing today on site, I want you to raise your hand very high. If you are giving me a text to give, you can text All Nations WA to 77977. 77977. If you are giving via Visa Card, MasterCard, American Express, Ventra, Chicago Public Library Card, Sam's Club, Costco, do all these have a card? You can go at the kiosk in the hallway and attempt to swipe it and we'll figure out a way to use it. And I want everybody giving. There are children around you that don't have offerings. Make sure you put something in their hands as well. We don't want to teach our kids to save money for juice and chips that causes autism and bad behavior. Hot dogs that are filled with mystery meat. Amen. We want to teach them the importance of tithing. When you're ready to give, you can stand on your feet and we're going to sow. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to obey you with our tithes and our offerings. And we decree the devourer is rebuked and that you have opened up windows and doors concerning our prosperity and our provision. 
in the high and powerful name of Jesus. We decree today that as we sow these tithes and offerings in faith, that we see an instant return and response by our obedience to the principle in your word, in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord.
Now everybody in here that's Christian should have received that with great joy. Yes. But I'll tell you why we didn't. Prayer is the anchor to, our, to Christianity. The Word of God is our logic. The Holy Ghost is the driving force. But we are anchored in and by prayer. And many of you are aware of the global prayer crisis. The prayer crisis in America is that the local church has placed priority on a lot of other things other than prayer. The prayer lives of local churches are, are dead. And one of the reasons why that's not a problem to most Christians is because it is a reflection of what is taking place in men's personal prayer lives. So I believe that God is arresting us and he is concentrating us to put prayer as a priority in our lives, uh, to set ourselves aside for what he wants to do. Say pray. pray. And I believe, Sam, I'm muzzled and I don't like it. I believe that there is something happening when I first started consecrating myself and walking away from things and turning into other things. It's kind of old school. But when we were struggling with prayer personally, we would do prayer partners. Yeah. And some of you are too young to know what that is, but what that looked like was is that if you were praying about an issue and the issue was not relenting and the issue was not breaking, then you would find somebody to pray in agreement with you. And we would do it uh, when, when, how many of you remember Next Hill? I had a poof. Remember that when in the first time? We would do it in the mornings in prayer. Before we would go to school, we would pray. Um, in high school, I led a prayer movement. We would pray around the flags. Uh, and we never saw shootings and all of that stuff where we were uh, because we had the right to pray. And I think that over the time, over the years, prayer became something that was relative to a specific demographic of people, but it is not really an emphasis point in most churches. And I believe the Lord spoke to me after fire conference and said, if you will dedicate a season of teaching and laboring in prayer, then I will make sure that this momentum is managed the right way. So I'm going to be teaching about prayer and we're going to be praying. It is so important that you do it. I believe there's a visitation of prayer coming to preachers. I believe that a prayerless mouthpiece is useless. Nobody cares about your relationship with a text if you don't bend your knee. You have no authority over the text you expodulate if you're not acquainted with the author. Um, I also believe that God is dealing with prayer in families, husbands and wives in prayer. I am known for strife. I am known for all kind of arguments. I am also known for the Jezebel Ahab dynamic, where one spouse manipulates the other. Uh, Jezebel is not always the woman, commonly it is, but sometimes there are men Jezebels yeah. who have a very Muslim-like control over their spouses, and they don't have their right to objectivity or individuality. I have known that where there was a case, there has not been a personal altar in the family established there. Um, I have known for there to be prayerless friendships where there are people who you spend quality time with but never pray for. Come on. I'm not trying to tell you what to do, you've grown, but I would never have anybody in my squad that I could not trust to pray for me. Or as quiet as I am, I would never tell selfies with people that I could not alert in the middle of a struggle. You say, hold on, I'm feeling a little weird right now. Can you call on the name of the Lord for me? This church is a little different. The men in this church actually like prayer. Um, that, that's typically not the, the common case, but we enjoy prayer. And it is our Bible tradition that the first intercessors in the scriptures were male. And if you look at the common church construct, the idea of a male intercessor is very, very, very strange. It's typically the mother's that call on the name of the Lord. But things happen also when fathers pray. And uh, I believe that God wants to, every great revival and every great outpouring of the Spirit, if it was started right, it started by prayer. 
if it continued, it was fueled by prayer, and if it was to end, should there have been such a thing, it would have been taken to the next level by prayer. So if there is a move of the Spirit that did not last, guess why it was? Somebody stopped praying. Yeah. And so February is going to be a month where we corporately stir the prayer and the level of the waters of prayer. And I'm going to encourage you as I give you a couple of passages of scripture. I don't care if it is old school to do it. Maybe you should find a prayer partner. Somebody that you're not very acquainted with that's going to be kind to your devils. Find somebody that you don't talk to and start to pray. Particularly, how many of you, and this is going to be most of you, how many of you have ever had a, a car battery die out? You've been in the middle of somewhere or parked in a, a store somewhere and you went in. <laughs> Ain't it the most frustrating thing? <laughs> and and I'm, you know what African American people do? We start pushing the accelerator as if that's going to help the battery. It's like, you know, one is gas, the other is battery. But we got like, <laughs> And then we let it rest a little bit. Father God, you see the name, aren't you? <laughs> We try to turn it and it's a burr, 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 burr. But nothing happens to a dead battery until it gets a jump. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And in order to get a jump, somebody with cables have to come and lend an electricity that they have to something that you have to be able to bring life back to that thing so that you can drive. I believe it is appropriate to have a prayer partner. Slap somebody with any kind of hair and say, you need a prayer partner. Find somebody bald head and tell them you need a partner to pray. So I'm going to give you a message today. I've got exactly 23 minutes to do it. I'm going to give you several passages of scriptures to enjoy this. But I'm going to start this message off with a, uh, a series off with a message called He Prepared a Whip. He Prepared a Whip. Amen. But you're the freaky devils. Y'all got excited when I saw you. I know what's active in this house. I'm going to sweat it, didn't you? Join me in the Gospel of John, the second chapter. And we're going to read verses 13 through 17. Let's hurry up. And I'm going to highlight some points and give you wisdom. And I'm going to ask the Father to baptize you in the spirit of prayer. We ought to want to be prayerful husbands. Prayerful wives, prayerful businessmen, prayerful leaders. We ought to want to be prayerful everything we are. John chapter 2 verse 13 reads like this in the King James Version. And the Jews' Passover was at hand and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Look at me. The reason this is significant is because Passover was the most popular feast of the Jewish culture. So in this particular scriptural text, you often imagine several dozen people, maybe there's 20 to 100 max, but there were actually no less than 400,000 people at Jerusalem during this time. You have 300,000 to 400,000 people for the feast. That means that the taste of Chicago was probably too small to pick, uh, give you the accurate contemporary picture of what this is like. So Jesus is not making a scene in front of close friends. This is a scene that is to be made in front of 400 plus thousand people. It was the Jewish gathering. 14 says, and found in the temple, say in the temple, say in the temple, those that sold oxen and sheep and doves and the changers of money. The reason why this is significant is because in the Bible, the changers of money, were they, they had dual professional roles. They were debt sharks or loan sharks. Basically, that is our equivalent to payday loans. Um, I have known people to take out payday loans and then hurry up and file bankruptcy so I ain't got to pay them back. 
payday loans. They are predatory lenders. So what they do is they'll take people with bad credit and take advantage of them, give them extremely high interest rates, uh, and they actually set you up uh, to be on a slippery slope, economically speaking. And if you know, in an urban context, payday loan stores, where you get to get a loan for your car title, and you get to pawn gold and all of this stuff, they are only in low economic uh, uh, neighborhoods. You won't find a payday loan store in Beverly Hills, or, 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 or you won't find them anywhere where there is a, a financially astute class of people. So the money changers were predatory lenders. And basically what they did was, because you could not use a, 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 a Greek or Roman Greco money in the temple, because they had graven images on them, what they did was they exchanged people's money so that they could have the right coins to use in exchange for it. So if you give me a dollar and the face on the dollar is pagan, I will give you the right money to use that does not have a graven image on it, just at an extremely high interest rate. And the interest rates changed every day. So there is a commonality to why these type of people were here. Say, I knew you. And 15 says, and when he had made a scourge, the word scourge is in every other version of this, it says he made a whip. Um, and the word made there literally means prepare. So I want to put you in the character statements of this story. That means that this was not an act that was not thoroughly thought out. Nor was Jesus coming in the temple looking for something that was available. To make a whip was a complicated process. That means he observed everything going on in the temple, found three scourges to combine them. This is what this is, a three scourge whip, right? And he had to play it, create a handle so he could get a good whip on it before he showed him what he was going to do. So I'm, ex I'm telling you why this is important because we read this as if it happened in a 10 minute set. Jesus sat down, watched them doing what they were doing and decided he was going to prepare a whip. He made a whip. Watching them doing what he was going to do. Ask me why. Because there was no other instrument appropriate to show them how he felt about them changing the culture of his house and taking it from prayer to commercialism. Come on. When he had made a whip of small cords, he drove them all out. Now, this is the only, one of the only stories, it's important for you to know, that is recorded in all of the synoptic gospels. That's Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. What that means is that there are certain events and certain experiences that kind of stagger in their appearances. Matthew may mention something that John does not mention, and uh, John may mention something that Luke does not mention. But this is recorded in all four. What does that mean? All of them remember this. Come on, church. John remembered it because he put it in the second uh, chapter of his book. Matthew put it all the way in chapter 21. Luke put it, I think, in 11 and 12. Everybody else wrote about it reflective. John was so traumatized by this, he put this in number two. Immediately after he told us how Jesus got here, the next verse he said, yeah, now remember he went to Cana, and then he went on in the temple. Now why is it important? Because this happened after Jesus went through the city and they cried Hosanna, which meant that this was at the latter part of his ministry, and John wrote about it in the beginning of his book. So this was so aggressive that John was like, I will never forget the day when he prepared a will. It was somebody's out. Never forget the day that he prepared a will. Now look at what happened. He turned over and overthrew the table. Say the tables. Say table. Verse 16 says, and said unto them that sold doves things away. Make not my father's house a house of merchandise. And his disciples remembered that it was written. Look at, this is how they explain or justify Jesus' action. 
The zeal for thine house is eating me up. Jesus said the zeal of God is literally eating me up for this house. I want to show you this in another example and then I'll preach it through. Go to Matthew 21. This is the same exact instance, but there are different personality statements in it so you can understand why this is important. I'll give you three to four points and send you home hopefully to pray. Matthew 21, verse 10. When you're there, say, I'm there. If you're not there, say, wait on me. Okay, verse 10 says, And when he was coming to Jerusalem, all the city was moved. I told you this was a very large audience. Who is this? And the multitude said, this is Jesus. Now look how they describe him. They don't call him or highlight the fact that he is the Messiah. They don't highlight the fact that he is a teacher or that he is a, a, a professor or an expert in the scriptures. They say, this is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth of Galilee. So whatever the personality is that we are about to see is prophetic in nature. That means that when a local church has real prophets that are active in them, there should always be tables turning over the absence of prayer. You can't convince me that there is a prophetic anything in the house if the prayer life of the church sounds like Woody Woodpecker. Because prophets, real ones, care about prayer. 11 says, the multitude said, this is Jesus the prophet. And look at verse 12. And Jesus went into what? The temple, the temple of God. Now here we go. Here is where it gets very interesting and you learn something you didn't know. And scream that C word. Yeah. And cast out all them that sold and bought in the temple and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves. And said unto them, look at what he says. It is written, my house shall be called the house of prayer. But you have made it a den of thieves. Verse 14. And the blind and the lame came in to him in the temple. And he healed them. Look at the next verse. And when the chief priests and scribes saw the wonderful things that he did, and the children crying in the temple, saying, Hosanna to the son of David, they were angry and displeased. Now look at me. A couple of things I've got to give you in 12 minutes. The first is this. When there is a commercialist culture, this is not talking about offerings, because this was not Jesus rebuking anybody for receiving money. This was talking about the culture of commercialism. And basically, what drives a commercial or a commercial culture is everybody's individual desires to get ahead. The reason why Jesus rebuked them for buying and selling is because when men occupied the temple with the buying and selling, everybody had an agenda and objective to put themselves at the advantage. When you have a product, a, a ointment, a, 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 a shoe line, uh, those of you that's old enough to remember Mary Kay, you got this stuff that smell like uh, uh, insect repellent, right? And they would have house parties, y'all remember that? Well, they would have Mary Kay parties. If, and if you offended, that means, listen, it's 2017. Find you something else to sell. Ain't no way in the world. You should still be selling Mary Kay. Anyway, um, and stuff stinks. And so, um, when you, you would buy and sell and exchange for money rates, what do they have in common? I've got 10 minutes to do this. I need your cooperation. Everybody has profit. P-R-O-F-I-T. Personal gain. Motivation. They have a drive to get ahead. Say under the table. Under the Say table. Under, the table. under the table. There is a predatory sales term that called, that's called under the table. And what that looks like is upsells. So basically how that works is this. If I don't want to pay you honestly, 
If I don't want to pay you officially for a service, for a product, for an exchange, I can pay you. What that means is that these are funds that are not accounted for. These are funds that, are, that don't have to be submitted for. And you can actually make more money because they take less tax out if I pay you where? Under, Under the, the table. table. And so Jesus was not just angry because of what was going on on top of the table. He was angry about what was going on underneath the table. Because what drove all of those behaviors were people's personal desires to get ahead. Can I take this deeper? In addition to the temple being occupied by people's personal desire to get ahead, it shows that when that is the dominant spirit in a temple, that it actually takes the objectives away from prayer. Now, when people have their personal uh, uh, ambition at the core of what they do, then they use Jesus as the icon for their success desires. So I want to pray, I want to live right, I want to see God for what he can do in my life and what he can do for me. He can give me a destiny, he can give me a way, he can give me a future. And what that does is that literally mutates the personality of the house of God and takes it away from prayer. Let me give you a little information real quick. Jesus is actually quoting Isaiah 56. Go to Isaiah 56. When he says it is written, he is referencing something the prophet said that would be active in my house. And I know y'all don't pray because of how unexcited y'all are. Look at Isaiah chapter 56. It says this. Uh, let's start in about verse 4. This is what Jesus was referencing. For thus said the Lord unto the eunuchs that keep my Sabbaths, and choose the things that please me, and take a hold of my covenant. Look at this. Even unto them will I give in my house and within my walls a place and a name better than the sons and the daughters. Who is he talking about? Gentiles. So Isaiah was prophesying literally about the nations, the ethnos. He is saying heretofore that the only people that are allowed here are traditional rabbinical Jews. People that belong to Israel. But Isaiah is prophesying and saying there is a day where all nations would be coming to pray. Why is this controversial? Because Isaiah prophesied this before the Messiah. There was no Jesus Christ to unite Jew and Gentile, rich or poor, male and female. There was still very much a segregated culture. And so Isaiah prophesied and said one day every nation, all nations, every culture will be brought into my house. Why? And I said I will give them a name. Now, why is Jesus referencing this? Because in the culture of merchandising and commercialism, where the house of God is the brand of a man or a people or, or ambition is what gathers them, what they have done is they have occupied themselves with giving themselves a name and a brand. So when you don't pray and when you are prayerless, what you do is you don't give God the work to do. You have actually put yourself in the provision seat. You have put yourself in the protector seat. You have put yourself in the defending seat. And he says in Isaiah 56, when all nations come together and pray, I will give them a place in my house and I will give them a name in my house. And look at what verse, the latter part of verse 5. It will be an everlasting name that shall not be cut off. So the difference between getting gain and getting interest rates and getting provision this way is that one day this will be cut off. But he said when they come into my house, I will prosper them in a way that won't be cheap. Yeah. And they will not be cut off. Many of you set out for stuff that's going to be cut off. But when you pray, God has a way of giving you a continuum in your provision, in your abundance, in your security, and in your prosperity. Look at verse 6. And the sons of the strangers, again Gentiles, that join themselves to the Lord to serve him. He is prophesying everything Paul would later write about. About being of another nation and being brought into God. To serve him. And keep him Sabbath and pollute from polluting it and taking a hold of my covenant. Look at verse 7. Here's where Jesus is making the parallel. Even them, say even them, yeah. will I bring where? I'm going to bring them into a holy mountain. They will not live like they've been valley dwellers. 
They won't live like cave dwellers. dwellers. They won't live their lives in poverty and in mammon and in comparison and in low level thinking. They're not going to have the dung hills erected in their mind and rodents acting in their soul and use that stuff in the house of God to replace what they didn't pray for. I'll bring them into the holy mountain and I will do what? Make them what? Joyful in my house of prayer. Meaning they're going to pray in and with joy. I'm going to tell you a secret about your prayer life. One of the reasons why it may be inconsistent is because you're probably a manic depressant. Come on. When there is an assault on your joy, prayer is one of the first things to go. I don't care about nothing people that are going to be like this. When you have the joy of the Lord, you find a way to be grateful about something, it's easy to wake up and start your day in prayer. It's easy to pray when you go into bed. But I'm going to tell you the problem is many of you people have attachments to your joy that affect your prayer life. And now your prayer life is no longer a discipline. It's in response to an emotion. So I pray based upon, some of you have a crisis prayer life. I pray when things go wrong or when I need something from God or I run to pray about things that I'm too lazy to act on. It's crisis response prayer. But he says, if they come into my house, every culture, I will make them joyful in my house of prayer. And their burnt offerings, glory to God, they pay them full commitments, their yes to me, their breakups, and their sacrifices will be accepted upon my altar. Why is it important? Because if you make a sacrifice, breaking up with somebody, leaving a job, switching to church, and you don't meet the level of prayer with the action, you didn't sacrifice. You gave something up. And there is a difference between just letting something go and sacrificing. If it's not a sacrifice, if it wasn't put on an altar. So if you don't have a personal altar, what you did was let go of something. But it doesn't qualify as a sacrifice to stand as a memorial unless when you gave it up, you gave it up in prayer. For my house, look at verse 7, shall be called the house of prayer. I'm about to fascinate you in two seconds. For all people, that's the whole spirit of this house, all nations. That doesn't mean every race necessarily, it means every culture. It means different backgrounds. Everybody belongs here. The ethnos, people groups belong here. Now why is this important? Look at what verse 8 says. The Lord God which does what? Gather it the who? The who? Where there is commercialism, there is no room for the outcasts. A prayerless church, I'm going to switch, switch it in a minute, has no room, no construct for the outcasts. They don't know what to do with them. Why? Where there is no prayer, judgment prevails. So now you see what's wrong with a lot of churches. That prayerlessness has created an environment for judgment to prevail. Look at number nine. I love this EP. All ye beasts of the field, come to devour. Yea, all ye beasts in the forest. He is saying, I've got a place for the beasts. Come, eat here. Because of what I've done in my house by prayer, we are not intimidated by the beast in anybody. Come on. The beast in you can't do nothing about the spirit of God. This environment is suited to kill beasts. Say, take it deeper. Say, take it deeper. Now, put up Proverbs 26 and 3. Watch me do this in under a minute. Proverbs 26 and 3. And then we're going to close at Matthew 21 again. Here's what Proverbs 26 and 3 says. A whip for the horse... A bridle for the ass and a rod for the backs of fools. The NIV, I think, reads it like this. As a whip is for the horse, so is the bridle for the ass. The same is a rod for the fool's back. He gives you three types of instruments that have the same use. Mm -hmm. The point of the whip on the back of the horse is to direct its passion. Come on to direct its energy, to make sure that it doesn't run off 
going where it wants to go. That's the point of a whip to a horse. To make sure that even though you're galloping and running, I want to make sure you're not misusing those energies in a direction different from who should be riding the back of the horse. I don't want you to get ahead of who's steering you. So then he says, he compares it to the bridle on the back of a donkey. This basically is the weight that reminds the donkey that it has work to do. When you put a weight on a donkey, it prevents it from getting lazy. As long as that bridle is on the back of that donkey, it knows it works for somebody. It is aware that it has a workload that is for somebody else. Now he says, the same way the whip is to the horse, pay attention, the same way the bridle is to the donkey, the rod is for the back of the bull. I'm going to preach a message next, next month called Old Dirty Bastard. Because the Bible says when you despise chastening from the Lord, you have lived your life as a bastard and you are not a son. So what happened is, when he brought this whip out, what was he saying? The temple was full of bastards. He was saying, you have basically pulled yourself from under my provision and under my name. And you have given yourself a name and given yourself a provision. And now what's driving your attendance is your personal gain. So this is what makes this so important. He used the whip as the instrument of discipline. He basically said, I'm about to turn these tables, I'm about to flip this stuff and bring a measure of discipline to my house. Now what happened? In Matthew's Gospel, go to Matthew 21. Here's my most profound part of this. It's about to help you in two seconds. In Matthew's Gospel, the whip that he prepared or the discipline that he prepared achieved two things. When he whipped, he whipped out the products. He sent the horses out, sent the donkeys out, sent the goats out, right? And then when he came, he flipped it over. He flipped it over. He just moved it. And the Bible says that once he flipped it, everybody went off. Go and run, Gio. Just run. Just run off. Act like you're scared. Go run. Get out. Say preach. Say preach. Why? Because when discipline comes to a house, people leave it. If you want to see who's in the house for the right reason, put some order in their joker. Make sure there are parameters. Set some priorities in place. Make sure that people don't show up when they want to. Don't leave when they want to. Don't report who they want to. Don't ordain themselves. Don't submit to themselves. If you want to find out where the snake is, put order around it. Say preach. Another important aspect of this is this. And immediately after he brought discipline and the wrong people left, the Bible says the right people came. The next verse says this. After he turned over the table with the whip, the Bible said the blind came, the lame came. Look at this right there. And he healed them. In other words, when prayer became the priority, the supernatural opened up. Once he got rid of that commercial stuff and that old fake stuff to present for people and personal ambition, there was an opening of supernatural activity. So the relationship is there. Wherever prayer is, the supernatural will always be. Something opened up that gave the sick and the blind a cue. Now that that's gone, I can come in and I can find my help. And then another thing happened. The Bible says that the kids, the youth, started to cry. When you read this in other gospels, it just says people. But Matthew specified who started to say, Hosanna. They were children. These were babies that recognized something is happening and something has arrived. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. When the children don't cry Hosanna, the people are not praying. Say, so take this deeper. Paul said your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. I'm out of time. I believe that Matthew 21 shows us a picture of deliverance. I think the reason why Matthew used the same term, listen, this is going to be a fancy word, Mom, I know you're going to study this, ekbalo, which is the biblical term that means to cast out. It translates into English as vomit, spew out. Glory to God. If you make any sudden moves, I'm going to know it's you. He came to the 
temple and they, the Bible writers use the same term, cast out, as they did to refer what happened when there were devils somewhere. He cast out the money changers. Just like, say just like. Just like. He cast out devils. If yeah. we make this a picture of you as a person, Jesus will come in your life with a whip. Y'all don't want to have no church. You'll find out that the people in the tables or the seats in your soul. And he will bring discipline. Get out. Stop talking to them. Go here. Change your life. Change your church. And what happens? The same way them people run out, them devils will run out of your soul as parts to allow for the spirit of prayer to be active in your life. Watch me. So one of the reasons why many of you may struggle at prayer is because there are forces in you that fight your prayer life. You may not need another uh, 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 schedule. You may just need some deliverance. And when you get deliverance, finding the communication barrier is going to be easy. But you've got rejection that's got you manifested. You've got all kinds of flaw, abandonment, pride. Egotism. I believe this month is going to be the month where the whip is coming out out of heaven. He wants to bring all in the courts of your life. It has nothing to do with a ministry, an objective, a TV program. What he wants to do is take the money changers out of your mind. Your heart. Your conversation. See, everything Jesus does is three-dimensional. So if he did this on earth, he did it in heaven. If he did it in heaven, he did it in hell. He gave us this to show us what he is doing through prayer and his people. He is disciplining us. Why? To make sure your passions are steered. You are that horse. You are that donkey. You are that fool on occasion that needs to be reminded by the whip of heaven that you must use these energies in the right direction. I don't even understand what I'm talking about. Without prayer, passions run wild. Energy is not used the right way. So prayer steers your efforts to make sure that what you're doing is driven in the right way. Who receives that? So the whip may come out. God is putting more muscle into your direction to make sure that you can pray. The good news is, is as you start to pray, the supernatural happens. The most important message to this is if you don't pray, you have no connection to anything supernatural. Prayer is the relationship to all supernatural activity. The African American church, forgive me y'all because I know Black Lives Matter, but we have no framework for supernatural activity. It's horrible. We have built our churches on great oratory and we have built our churches on great skill and when there is a house that flows in the supernatural, Satan knows, hurry up, discredit them. Hurry up, bring them down. Hurry up, make sure because wherever there is supernatural activity, there's going to be the casting out of devils, there's going to be the healing of the sick. Isaiah 56 it says there's going to be a place for the outcast. So you're going to see some of everything all in this place. But that's what big all nations is about. There is no one type of people that can find a place here. It's literally a place for all people. Psalms 2 and 8, ask of me and I will give you the heathen. I will give them over to you. And when they get there, what's in them submits to what's on the house because what drives the house is power. So, Father, set us on fire. Yeah. Let the spirit of prayer grip us and come upon us for our lives and our families, our futures, our present, even concerning our past. Baptize us in the spirit of judgment and burning and purge again the daughters of Jerusalem, even by the spirit of prayer. Let there be late nights and early mornings. Give us prayer agendas and prayer goals and prayer burdens in the name of the Son of God. May every husband, may every wife, may every son, may every daughter be gripped by the spirit of prayer in this season. Not just supplication, but different types of prayers being made on the behalf of the saints. Take them into binding and loosing. Take them into fasting. Replace commercialism with a crying out. Replace commercialism with a crying out. And let the power of prayer be active to open up supernatural. 
supernatural activity in the eyes of the saints. We give you glory for it. We give you honor for it. And we give you praise for it. In Jesus' name, give the Lord the praise right now. I said give him the praise right now. I have to spend some more time laboring there at 11.30, but this is something God is serious about. He's freeing you so that you can come closer in prayer. How many of you have already been having God deal with you about this? I've been waking up every morning at 5. Like, God, they told me I'm moving you in prayer. It's time to do some things to you pray. Prayer is the changing room of the saints. It's not just a place to communicate with God. It's how Kent Clark Kent becomes Superman. Every time Jesus got ready to do something different, he went in the changing room and he became dressed. Paul said, put on Christ. Christ has got to be something you put on. When you pray, you change clothes. You've got stuff you've worn and stuff that people have put on you. It's time to put on Christ by prayer. You do it every day by prayer. Now, if you don't know how, this is the perfect time to get somebody to disciple you. Perfect time to get somebody to show you how to pray. Hey, we'll pray every Wednesday from 5 to 5.30. I'll teach you how to do this and it will become active in your life. Come on, put those hands together for the Lord. If you're here and you've never... Uh, if you're here and you have never accepted the Lord as your personal Savior, my wife is going to kill me. I took 10 of her minutes. If you're here and you have never accepted the Lord as your personal Savior, or you have accepted the Lord and you are not a member of a local church, you are an inactive member in the church, you don't have a pastor, you don't have a community, if you fit either of those, this church would love to be your church, I'd love to be your pastor, you can come right now. Come and accept the Lord. If you don't know where you're going to heaven, if you don't know where your eternal security Security is move and make a decision right now to make Jesus Christ the sovereign Lord of your life. He is the El El Yon, the Most High God, and He'll receive you right now with open arms. Come on, move very quickly, people. Listen, if you're coming, God has been pinching you about being in a church that is alive, a church that is active, a church that is filled with the fire of God, a church that allows for the power of God to move. Please come from wherever you are. We'll take you right now, no matter where you are, or what you have, or where you've been, or what you've done. You can come right now. Come on, come right now. Come on, all nations. Help me work really quickly, please. The bathroom is beautiful. I'd like you to start talking to people around you. Really if you would like for somebody to come and get you, you don't want to take the walk by yourself. I want you to come now. You need a church home, a pastor, a leader, a community that can help you. I want you to come now. Come now from wherever you are. This is the perfect day to do it. The perfect day to do it. Come on from wherever you are. Wherever you are. If you don't have a church, home. Um, if, if you sit at home and watch Joel Osteen, you can still watch him on DVR. Just come to this church. He is not your pastor. Come now. Glory be to God. Come now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Glory be to God. If you're here, you're a man or a woman of God and you're afraid to vacate a position, come now. There is room. This is a great house and room for everybody to be as great as God has called them to be. Yes. You don't have to surrender yes. what you think you're called to do because you don't think there's room for you. There's all types of gifts here. we got apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, psalmists, intercessors, painters, dancers, ballerinas, actors, tax writers, <laughs> policemen. Going once, twice. So we're thanking God for our one, two, three. Sorry. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Come on, put those hands together for all nine. Come on, you can do better than that. Yeah. I mean, set your feet up, not to dismiss you. Listen, because I'm over time, please evacuate the sanctuary. We have classes that have got to go, so please leave. Go get your, your cars and the kids are here. Yeah, uh, all my nine, I want you to follow Elder Corey. He's going to take you to our new members' room and get you started. Uh, Father, bless your people. Set your sign and your seal upon them. Give them a victorious week in the place of prayer and show them great courage as they triumph in you. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. You can be dismissed. Good morning, all nations. Good morning, good morning. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. May you please stand and join us for a time of prayer and intercession. Begin to speak in your heavenly language. 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Begin to worship our King. Begin to think about who he is to you. What he's called you to do. The things that he has set before you. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, God.
that we take the opportunity to know, to understand, and even to realize that you didn't put us in this earth just to exist. But Father, you said even by your son that greater work shall we do. So we thank you today for even the spirit of impartation that energizes us for this moment to not look at our lives as just happenstance or just coincidence, but Father, to look at it through the lens of the purpose and to know that you crafted us and you created us and you made us, God, to be and to do what Jesus has done in the earth. And so we thank you today that we are activated in what you have called us to do. We thank you today, God, that miracles, signs, and wonders shall be performed by our hands. And we give you the glory for it now in the name that is above every name. Can somebody scream the name Jesus? Scream it, Jesus! Jesus in the room tonight. Come on, celebrate him in the room. Come on, lift up your voice. Come on, lift up your voice. Praise his name. Praise his name. Praise his name. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. We give you the praise. We give you the honor. We lift your name. Thank you, Jesus. Just hook that neighbor real tight and release true peace upon them today. Let the shalom of the Lord come upon them. Come on. Oh, 
today I see. Hallelujah. We're going to go ahead and shift the atmosphere. I'm going to ask you to look at your screens for announcements. Before we get to that, I want to reiterate this church. That through the month of February, there is no corporate prayer. No corporate prayer. We're going to reconvene next month with our new service schedule. Let's look to the screens for our announcements. Good morning, world changers. Welcome to all nations. Here are your weekly announcements. Feel free to grab your iPhone calendars and start putting these dates in. All Android users, grab a pen and paper as your phone loads. NY University is back into full swing with 2017 first quarter education courses. We are offering new members, foundations, new images, life of Jesus, deeper discipleship, and financial stewardship courses. You can find class descriptions, pricing, and schedule information at allnationswa.com slash NYU2017. NY is shooting for three. Beginning the first Sunday in March, join us for our new service times at 8 a.m., 10.30 a.m., and 1 p.m. Spread the word and see you there. The Education Department of All Nations presents Protecting Our Tribe, legal information you can't live without. Join us on Saturday, March 4th from 10 a.m. to noon as we discuss various topics including wills, trusts, powers of attorney, entrepreneurship, and much more. Everybody, what's going on? It's Pastor Jamal and Natasha. And we're so excited because we're coming to you with our Transform Gathering that's coming up February the 17th. And you know what we're talking about. Love. Or lust. How to date in holiness. Yeah, I said it. Holiness. Come on, somebody. And guess what? We're not going to be alone this round. We are going to be joined by our good friends and transformed leaders. Ryan and Quincy Booker, along with Robert and Brittany Rush. And no, it's not going to be a panel. Mm -hmm. We are going to be preaching, passing the microphone, each of us sharing our journey, our the good, bad, and ugly of our journey to marriage. Yeah. So you don't want to miss this transformation. And we're going to be featuring our brand new Transformed Worship Band. We are so excited, man, for these the young adults to hit yeah. the stage and be able to worship God. So you yes. want to join us February 17th, 730 p.m. Don't miss it. Please remember that today's message will be available for purchase for $5 at the Well Bookstore located in the lobby. Thank you for listening to our weekly announcements. If you've missed anything, you can visit our website at allnationswa.com forward slash announcements. Thank you for joining us at the Well and enjoy the service. Hallelujah. Tell the person your neighbor. Amen. Great men and women Amen. are only born for the time and they are needed the most. The only reason you're still here is because God is not finished. If this were everything life had to offer, then you'd have a reason to quit. But because he's not finished, you've got to press harder and see what tomorrow holds. Come on, put those hands together for your tomorrow, will you? I don't believe you. I said put those hands together for your tomorrow. Hallelujah. Good morning, grace and peace to you in the name of Jesus Christ. It is an honor to be here again with you at the place of grace. And I'm so excited to be amongst the people who celebrate uh, the life of Jesus Christ, and who he is, what he's doing and what he is saying. And I'm glad to belong to a people that still celebrate the name of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, uh, the victory of Jesus and all that he is. Amen. God has given him a name that is above every name. And the Bible declares that every knee bows at that name. If you don't have anything else to celebrate for, you have the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The Bible says that the name of the Lord is a strong tower. That the righteous run there and they are safe. So I'm excited about the name of Jesus. We have a lot going on here at All Nations. And a couple of things we want to make you mindful of before we go into our time of giving. 
And the first thing I want to let you know is Tuesday, for those of you that signed up for Dr. Ross's volunteer campaign, those of you that are part of the, uh, the Levitical Order, which is our very fine gathering of men who serve here at All Nations, and those of you that are an elder leader, Tier 1, uh, every Tuesday in the month of February, uh, we do our uh, drill night. So we don't have one this Tuesday because we realize that most of you will be celebrating uh, Valentine's Day, uh, but we will reconvene the following week. So keep in mind that we need to be here for drill day uh, as we're practicing for the new rollout of our service times to be effective for the first Sunday in March. The first Sunday in March, we go to three services and we're excited about that transition. So we are preparing to expand the event and preparing to make room for the masses. And so that is very important for you, all right? How many first time visitors do we have here? Raise your hand, I don't know if we did that. Did we see you? Wave at me really quickly if this is your very first time. Now one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, uh, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, and then we have 21, 22, 23, 24, 25 first-time visitors. Can we acknowledge all 25 of our first-time visitors, please? Amen. Um, if you keep your hands up, one of these handsome gentlemen will offer you uh, a connection card. We are a church that believes in the power of connection, and we want to stay connected with you. Uh, so please avail your information to us so that we can keep in contact with you. Amen. How many of you were part of Activating the Saints this Saturday with Prophet Marcus Allen? Um, how many of you were stretched and enjoyed in your ability to hear from the Lord? Okay. Well, in the event that you were not, I want to invite you to the next Activating the Saints. And um, here at this church, we don't believe in inactive members. We do believe uh, that every person should be a part of a team and it's very 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 important for you to do that So the prophetic teams are just one of the teams that we have here at all nations worship assembly. So uh, Congratulations to all of you that went and never heard the voice of the Lord and never spoke prophetically before it's a massive massive achievement So um, here at this church we are a multiplying church and we celebrate anytime believers come into their full potential in the Lord So uh, stay tuned for that and then thank you for your prayers as we were in uh, Atlanta to Georgia, and we celebrated the installation of pastors in the Bryant and Tarika Frank, and uh, it was a very, very, very special um, occasion for me. I believe that every church that is a church that God started should have the vision to start other churches, uh, and I believe that any church that does not have the ability to give birth to other churches are sterile, uh, and there are churches that give birth to churches on accident. There's a rip, a tear. But we want to deliberately plant around the world. And so that was very important to me. Back in 2000, and I believe 10, uh, we received a prophetic word that our very first church plant. Now, this might have been 2007. We were on 38th Street. And uh, we received a prophetic word that we, the first city we would plant in beyond Chicago would be Georgia. And it was so. So I stood in the, uh, the fulfillment of prophecy this weekend. And it was a very, very beautiful thing. The Bible says through one man's disobedience, sin came into the world, but through one man's obedience, all were made righteous. And I saw that uh, a man surrendered to God could save lives that he did not know. So it was a very beautiful thing to see. Thank you for your prayers. Those of you that travel with me, the word of the Lord was great. Uh, it was a powerful thing. They have great problems to manage. All Nations Atlanta is starting off where we were at year six. So they've got about four or 500 members down there already, and they're not even in existence for a whole year. So I'm so excited about them, and I'm going to do it over and over and over and over again. So thank you for your prayers. I want you to open your Bibles with me to John chapter 12, verse 24. We are preparing for paid in full. Yeah. 